Hi everyone and welcome to this uh, SSH uh, network uh, webinar from the for the from the webinar series. <coughs> Organized by <coughs> Maria Stenseke and Marla Emery. Uh, and today we have this webinar in relation to the external review of the Nature Futures framework. Uh, and we're looking forward to hear Hai Jin Kim, a member of the SSH network and uh, also a fellow in the IPES scenarios and models task force will hold an introduction about the NFF. Uh, thank you again for inviting us on uh, the task force to this uh, social science and humanities stakeholder network. Um, my name is Hetin Kim and I'm a fellow to the IPES scenarios and models task force. We are here today because we there is an official external review of the nature futures framework out for review uh, and um, the framework is a scenarios and modeling tool that the IPES community has been developing over the last almost five years. Um, so the external review is out uh, uh, by IPES and the purpose is to for the, the scenarios and models task force and, and the IPES greater community to receive input from different perspectives on the needs for further development of the framework and to enable the use of the framework in scenarios development. The procedure goes that you registered uh, on the IPES website to be a user of IPES or a member of IPES, and then you can register for the uh, Nature Futures Framework as a reviewer. And then you will be provided with the draft document for, uh, for commenting. The review is open for governments and any interested experts, including humanities and social sciences and other so stakeholders. And the document is not uh, to be cited, quoted, or distributed. Uh, it's an internal document. So just to begin, I thought, um, as our co-chairs had prepared al already for the official doc dialogue, we would start with uh, what we mean by scenarios. So scenarios are the representation of possible futures. They can be qualitative with narratives about the future or visions. Uh, or be quantitative using mathematical models and figures. And they can include alternative policy and management options and show how drivers or causes of change could affect nature and people in the future. They also allow us to describe and evaluate possible futures using scientific and, and other knowledge systems. And, um, and you might ask why do we need new scenarios? Um, in 2016, IPES published the methodological assessment on scenarios and models. And uh, the, the, the methodological assessment actually found that scenarios are useful tools for policy support, but most of the global scenarios are developed for other purposes like climate change and impacts across different sectors. And very few scenarios detail positive futures. And, and a lot of them also lacked participatory approach. And as a result, they rarely inform actions for different actors, and they're limited to assessing mostly negative anthropogenic impacts on nature. And alternative and innovative policy and management options relating to nature are often not very well represented. So as a follow-on of the IPES methodological assessment, the, the expert group has set itself to, to um, develop new scenario, scenarios approaches that provide diverse multicultural options that engage society as a whole globally in actions and lifestyle changes. Okay. So how did the Nature Futures Framework come about? It started roughly in 2016 with a workshop that led to the, the formulation of concepts for Nature Futures. And then in 2017, we started uh, with a visioning workshop with large group of stakeholders coming from different countries, uh, sectors, and also um, non-government organizations and indigenous communities. Um, and it, we, went, we spent extensive time um, over the course of a week uh, through various exercises that, that I will also partly show later to come up with seven visions for the future where nature and people are, are in harmony with each other. Then taking those visions, we took it to the IPES plenary uh, with more stakeholder engagement and consultation and put internally with IPES and also externally through other means like uh, conferences to receive more feedback and, and also to fill the gap in the visions that we came up with. And then the next phase uh, involved uh, analyzing the accumulated 
uh, consultation results to to come up with this framework that um, that the expert group, former expert group, uh, had spent ex extensive time analyzing and also elaborating elaborating on the visions. <laughs> so with the the draft nature features framework, uh, we did um, more stakeholder engagement through the CBD conference of party in 2018 in Egypt and also additional uh, workshops with experts, practitioners, and, and also social science scholars um, to see how we can take the framework in developing the narratives and modeling them and developing indicators. And we also eventually um, took it to the workshop of youth, uh, young scholars in Brazil to, uh, that resulted in a series of publications that where the, the young scholars had applied Nature Futures framework in various studies and projects of their own. And as of the latest, we uh, consolidated all of these materials that had accumulated over the three, four years in uh, developing some illustrative example narratives um, uh, from the task force uh, itself. And, and, and then we also studied additional modeling workshops with broader uh, scientific communities to um, help apply the nature vision framework in, in developing scenarios and also model-based information to really inform the future effects assessments, namely nexus and transformative change. So today we're here because there is an external review out for your input uh, through these additional dialogues. So it's been really like several years of uh, stakeholder engagement and dialogues um, to really reach this point of external review. So what is a nature features framework? Uh, the framework really harbors on multiple nature values perspectives, uh, which can help translate it into wide ranging nature centered scenarios. And it really also tries to reconnect people with nature from diverse perspectives to find multiple roles, benefits and meanings of nature. So as you have seen in the triangle before, uh, nature for nature perspective uh, really gives the rights to nature for, for its existence, uh, its intrinsic values, and, and it's really for the river, for instance, uh, in the system of freshwater, um, it is really for the nature itself to, to sustain uh, its own processes. And nature for society really is about what we receive from nature as in fish for food um, or any other aspects that in, improves the well-being of humans livelihood. And nature as culture is where we see people as indiv indivisible uh, from nature. So we are one, uh, we create a lot of cultural meanings, uh, we have um, rituals, we have um, some reciprocal relationship between uh, nature and people. So that's something that we really also, also want to emphasize and bring forth in scenarios where um, we emphasize on the relational value of nature. So in the process of the development of the nature versus framework, we have applied uh, to the extent possible from the task force and also the broader communities that we are engaged. Um, and, and moving forward, we are really hoping that we also catalyze more application of nature versus framework in various different ways so that we can improve the framework and also um, produce the methodological guideline that can be really useful and, and um, understandable. So the idea is that we have a flexible scenarios and modeling framework that's centered around nature and value perspectives. Um, and we really use this bottom up approach to mobilize scientific communities where we really envision future where nature is more valued than it is now and also more diversely. At any regional scale, it can be applied using various means as we as I have presented before. So one way of uh, applying the nature features framework is, as we have done in New Zealand in 2017, you can, um, with your stakeholders, create diverse positive future visions on living in harmony with nature, so that we can have more positive outlook on, on what the future could be. Another way is creating the narratives that reflect these paradigm shifts, um, good anthropocenes, like good practices, and positive levers for transformative change and innovations that can really bring us from the business as usual to something that, that moves us towards those positive futures. 
And, and we are also envisioning that the framework will be used in modeling and also developing uh, even more indicators or, or more informative indicators that can incorporate mutually and positively reinforcing feedbacks across these interventions that reflect nature and also bring forth more co-benefits cool coming from multiple um, benefits of nature. So, I mean, whereas we have these three dominant uh, value perspectives on nature, we also understand that they are not mutually exclusive, but are quite intricately interconnected with each other. So what we do for Nature for Nature obviously will benefit the society in the short term, long term, and we obviously safeguard nature for creating um, or sustaining the cultural heritage with nature. And we really want to find these um, mechanisms or interventions that really reinforce these um, into uh, some uh, positive pathways um, uh, that, that can inform decisions uh, in, in different policy processes. So what are our next steps? Uh, we are here in the fourth quarter of 2021, um, going through this external review that will end at the end of this month. Um, we are, we've done a series of dialogues online, um, including this one with you. And based on the input that we receive from the reviewers, we will improve the document um, to present it in the next IPES plenary in mid-2022. And then there will be more consultations uh, into the future. I wanted to end the presentation with some of the core papers and workshop reports that you can reference as you review the document. And uh, the five core papers that we have already out or in preparation, like one by uh, Isabel Rosa et al. really goes on into the core concept of nature futures um, as it originally was developed in 2016 onwards. And then uh, Laura Pereira et al. published last year really documents all of the processes that it took going from this concept to the nature futures framework. And it has a lot of methodological um, engagement that we had in, in coming up with this framework. And then there's one in preprint that goes from how do you apply the nature features framework in, in developing the narratives and modeling a uh, few co core concepts and building blocks that you can also take uh, forward as you uh, apply nature features framework. And, and then there's the illustrative narratives publication and, and one major one on the nature features framework itself uh, that's in preparation. And all of these publications are uh, based on the workshops that we held officially through IPES, and here this is uh, there for your view. And they also document all of the raw materials and, and stakeholder engagement outputs as they had been done um, more in detail from the publications. And as of last month, we had 72 papers uh, that was searchable in the Google Scholar using the Nature Bridges Framework. And there's eight ongoing case studies on modeling Nature Bridges Framework catalyzed from a workshop from earlier this year. So um, we really invite you uh, to provide us more input that can help us improve the framework and also the methodological guidance um, coming from the social science and humanities scholars. Um, and uh, and we also encourage you, if you're inspired, um, to take the framework forward and see how you can also apply them in your projects. And I thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Daijin. <clears throat>